Hey guys, Shift A3 here. I want to take a moment and show you uh, this new little gadget. It's a smart shutdown switch for a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I tested it on a Pi 3, Pi 2, and Pi 4. So what it does is it allows you to monitor a service. We're going to create a service uh, shortly and the next piece of the video, uh, but I wanted to go through and show you what this thing is. So, what it uses, pop the case open, so y'all can see it. So, standard tactile switch, few resistors, an LED, and a AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. Um, the reason I chose to use a microcontroller is that way it can monitor the various states of the Raspberry Pi, whether it's off, it's running, uh, it's going through a shutdown option, and it's safe to unplug. So it actually hooks up to Raspberry Pi GPI, GPIO pins. Um, they're numbered here, uh, ground. One, five, seven, and eight. So it's pretty simple to hook up. Um, but like I said, it does have a Raspberry Pi smart shutdown script. It's written in Python. So we're going to have to, uh, get that over to the, to the Raspberry. Um, what I've done now is I actually have a brand new Raspberry Pi image, uh, sitting on a, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, standard 8 gigabyte, uh, SanDisk, SD card. So, <clears throat> so this ends this part. Um, as you see, it actually comes also with a nice little 3D case that just simply snaps up. Just like so. Your header pins are on the other side. So we're going to go now over to my Raspberry Pi, and I'm actually just going to uh, SSH into it is what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back. Welcome back. So like I said before, I have a standard Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, with a brand new image on it. The only thing I've done to it is I've actually enabled the SSH protocol. I also enabled VNC uh, just because I like to remote into it and see the GUI if I need to. Um, but first couple of things we need to do, one thing is we need to get the actual Python script over to the Raspberry. I'm assuming you probably already know how to do that. You can FTP it. Uh, you can type it all out if you really want to. Uh, or you can go into SSH and do a copy from one PC to the other for text. Uh, or you may have even set up a file share to be able to drop it over. I've already taken the liberty to do that. Um, I've already taken the liberty on this particular new image to set up SSH. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and connect into it via SSH. Now I copied it with FileZilla, but you can use any type of FTP program. And this is where I've put it, inside the documents. However, I do like to execute my scripts from a binary uh, bin directory. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy it, and we need elevated privileges to do that because it's a restricted directory. So we're going to copy it. rpi-ss.py, that's the actual Python script that's going to be running as a service and it will actually monitor the actual button presses and help monitor the state and communicate back to the ATtiny85 microcontroller for the current Raspberry state. We're going to put it in slash usr slash local slash bin directory. Next, what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and go over to that directory.
Now we need to actually add a execute permissions to it. Plus x, lowercase x, and Linux, remember everything's case sensitive. Forgot to suit it. See. Because it's a protected directory. So now we have the execute permission added to the Python script. So there's still a couple of things we need to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go into the Raspberry Configuration Program. to interface options P6 which is the serial port we need to have this enabled if this is not enabled then the smart shutdown device will not function uh, because it actually uses some serial lines to actually communicate and query and respond back to the actual microcontroller that way it knows whether you're in a running state you're booting up you're shutting down it's safe to unplug the power. So we're going to go ahead, say yes, OK, finish. So now serial is actually in it. We're still not done. So we want to go ahead and edit. This is the easiest way is to use the rc.local file to tell it to run a script. And what this little RC local file does is you can actually put in all your script files to run at startup so it'll start running it as a service. And all behind the scenes you don't ever know it's actually running. Where you want to place this line of code is before the exit zero. If you place it after exit zero, it'll never run. So before the exit zero, I typically do it this way. Um, sometimes I've seen some Linux systems you don't have to put in uh, the actual Python executable, but on the Raspberry Pi, for some reason, you have to, so it just likes it. So, yet no hub, Python, USR slash local slash bin, then the Python script, and the ampersand sign. That is important. The ampersand sign will tell the system to run this script in the background and go ahead and continue to the next line. So if you had another line in there to run something else, it would do that. If you do not have that ampersand sign, then it will pretty much sit there and run and just wait. And you know, for an input, it's, it's waiting for something to happen. So you want that ampersand sign. So we will go ahead and press Control X say yes we want to save and now it's saved so now we can shut down the system and then I'll show you how to actually hook the unit up and we'll power it up and you'll see it work so stay tuned and we'll be right back So now it's time to hook it all up. So, as I said, the first thing you're going to need is some header wire. A lot of them will come as individual wires. So, I actually put mine into a five header connector. Five pin. The way this hooks up, as you can see, we have ground on the top, 
this as pin 1, 5, 7, and 8, which will hook up to the corresponding pins on the Raspberry Pi GPIO connector. You can look that up on Google or your search engine of choice to show you which pins are which. So I have mine set up where, of course, black is ground. That's just the way I have mine set up. So that's good there. And just as a quick reference, this is the Raspberry Pi we're going to be hooking it up to. Bottom row starts pin one. Top row starts on pin two. So you can count an odd on the bottom. One, three, five, seven, nine, etc. cetera. Two, four, six, eight, ten, et cetera, on top. Pretty simple. So, pin one is your three volt pin. So that's the power pin that will power the actual microcontroller. So pin five is my white wire and pin seven is my yellow wire. So let's go down here. Flip this around. So one, we skip three, there's five, there's seven. So the next thing we want is ground, which is my black. And you can hook this up to any ground you want. Um, as I said, you can reference the GPIO pinout for the Raspberry. And then pin 8 is my green. Okay. I know pin 6 is ground. So I'm going to hook it up this way. The reason I say you can use any ground you want is some, some users may have a fan and may already have it hooked up to pin 6 and may need to use another pin. So now it's all hooked up. I have this unit here set up where it can run headless. I do have, like I said before, SSH and VNC both enabled. Um, we have enabled the serial as required. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to flip this around so I can plug in the network cable. Then I'm going to plug in the power cable, and you will see this power up. So as you see, it's flashing. That's telling me it's booting. If it flashes more than four times like it's supposed to, if it flashes less than five times, you don't have your serial enabled. So once the LED stays lit, we know the Pi is actually booted up and ready to go. So now it's booted up. So if you give me a moment, I will switch over to my other screen so you can actually see what happens when I press the actual tactile switch to issue the shutdown. So this is the final segment of this Raspberry Pi Smart Shutdown switch. So what you're viewing now is I have my Zoc terminal up. I haven't logged in yet. I have a command prompt for my Windows machine. Then I have the VNC viewer connected to my Raspberry Pi 3 that the switch is actually hooked up to that we did in the previous section. So as you can see, my Raspberry Pi's address, IP address, 10.0.0.102. We'll go ahead and start a continuous ping. And as you can see, it's up, it's running. I'm going to go ahead and 
connect into the SSH. As you can see, this is the same unit. So now the actual script is running and should be monitoring. When I hold the, the switch down on the smart shutdown device for a few seconds, it will start flashing. Once it starts flashing, it's issuing the, the nice shutdown where it's going to close all your sessions and all your files, uh, everything like that. So let's go ahead and press it and you'll see that the that I'll lose connection on my VNC viewer. You'll see I'll lose connection on the terminal through the SSH console. And then within a few seconds or so, it'll start timing out on the reply pings. Pressing, booting, as you see, I've lost connection. You see down here, I've lost connection. And now it's gone to timeout. So it's completely shutting down. It literally only takes a few seconds to start shutting down. When the light or the LED turns itself off, then it is actually safe to unplug the power if you wanted to. Um, but instead of unplugging the power, I'm leaving the power in. I'm going to press it again. And you'll start seeing the replies come up. And then I will be able to reconnect into it. So I'm pressing it now. The smart shutdown starts to flash as normal, which means it's actually re reading the, uh, the state of the Raspberry Pi, knowing that it's powering up right now. And it usually takes about 10 seconds or so, and I'll start getting replies, which there they are. So now my Raspberry Pi is back up, and it was just from a simple press. Now please note that you know you can't unplug the power and just plug it back in. You actually have to shut it down nicely uh, with the switch or a shutdown command. And then you can just press the switch again. It's still reading the power, but it's not powered up. It's pretty much in standby mode. And once it's grounded, it will power itself up like, like any PC does. Back in an SSH right there. And my VNC viewer. And there it is. Drag that over and you can actually see. There it is. And it's the same IP address. There's one zero two there. Same as here, as I connected. So if you're looking for one of these little units, they do come in handy uh, simply because if you have an SD card and if you unplug your power, at least in my experience, and I know a few other people have had this, where if you unplug the power, lose power some t a few times, it can, it can corrupt your SD card, and then you have to reload. But with this switch, press it and it will close everything out just like you're doing a shutdown command. A uh, link to it uh, for my store will be at the end of this video. Uh, please feel free to check stock. If there's zero stock there for some reason, feel free to shoot me a message through the site, through the store, and I can let you know uh, when they'll be available. I do have quite a few of these to, you know, to be able to build. So it's, and it's fairly easy. Uh, to get this thing going doesn't take too long um, plus it can come with a 3d printed case like I showed you but that's an option thanks for watching